Episode 9. We're nearly at double figures. I know, I know. Am has, I still here? Has Jeremy Kyle got in touch yet? No, no. A lot of people have still been messaging me about that, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I actually had a message the other day. I think it was from Amanda. Was saying, oh, I actually watched your uh, your podcast, the Jeremy Kyle one. Oh, it was good. I'm looking forward to the rest. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you're, you're way behind. We're like eight episodes <laughs> yeah. deep at this point. She said, oh, I haven't watched the rest yet. I'm like, well, well, give you something to watch. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought he would get in contact with you because you said the nice <laughs> stuff about him, right? But yeah. Unfortunately, it, it appears, um, uh, you know, Jeremy, anytime we're here, you know, we're still open to still it. Still open to it. We're looking forward to it. So uh, it's been a while since it's uh, just been the dynamic duo of us two. Yes, I know. I know. It's been a, a few episodes, unfortunately, I missed. Yeah. Um, and then the rest were... Uh, like Zoom ones and just one-on-ones, COVID restrictions and whatnot. And well, it wasn't even COVID restrictions, really. We just didn't have enough mics, and we do now. Yeah, we, I'm, oh yeah, I'm, we do and people are still pulling out, so we still are only using <laughs> two mics. So perfect. But um, <laughs> so obviously, the last couple were like you. You were actually meant to be on the musicians. I know. Play Money Part Two, but you were you were you were ill and and uh, pulled out, and then we couldn't actually record one last week because I was in isolation as close contact to someone of coronavirus so on and so forth but anyway we're here now we're here now I've, we're I've, safe you know <laughs> we're even on episode six when it was just us mm-hmm. the camera cut out yeah. so we've not actually had an episode like this since what episode three yeah it's been a while yeah it's been uh, yeah i've yeah. missed the camera i know same and we can actually <laughs> see ourselves yeah. because we've got the thing flipped around but we're not here to talk about all these things today <laughs> so we're here to we've, talk about we've social been going media down rabbit hole after rabbit hole before the start of this we're literally watching a video of richard branson in space oh yeah oh yeah I, i've never seen this before john found it quite humorous that i was saying he was in a space shuttle with a GoPro and was thinking about getting me arrested under the mental health act or something like that but no it is legit i showed him it on youtube and, richard branson uh, in space yeah so <laughs> what are we talking about today so it's the impact of social media on modern day society yeah well this is, like we've said before going into this episode, this is going to be something that we're just going to branch off because yeah. there's so much to talk about. There's so many avenues you can go with this. Mm-hmm. And obviously with social media, it's such a big thing oh, yeah. in today's world, especially for young people. And, you know, we still consider ourselves young people. Oh, yeah. We've still got we've still for life. many, <laughs> many episodes to come of the Northeast Corner. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. So I guess the first kind of question we should bring up is when did we... Because you know we're all on social media, including us, including this podcast. So, yeah. So when did we? What was our first experience of social media? I think my first experience was prob- probably probably um, MSN Messenger. Ah, MySpace. Yeah. So MSN Messenger, and then for me after that, Bebo. Bebo. Yeah. And then Facebook, and then all the rest that came with it. I tried Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, but do you know what? I just you, you, you get, I got to a point where I had like all of them. Do you remember I, Viber? No. Oh well, uh, Viber was a bit more like WhatsApp, I suppose. Free calling, oh, more like through a, Wi-Fi, yeah, yeah. And, um, free messaging and stuff like that. Basically, texting without the whole pay as you go, yeah, yeah you know, exactly. charge per text, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, get a little bit of Wi-Fi. On you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, but then obviously it was at the same time as like WhatsApp and stuff like that. But WhatsApp's obviously still the dominant one. That's probably one of the only other ones I use is that. And yeah, I still have Facebook. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. Unfortunately, yeah. um, I'm pretty sure. Doesn't Facebook own WhatsApp? I know they own Instagram. But I'm pretty sure. Did, think, they, did they take over WhatsApp as well? They probably have. I they could, probably have. I'm, I'm trying not to spread misinformation there, but I'm pretty confident that is the case. But you know. Correct us if, if we're speaking absolute drool. Because no, no. <laughs> so then we're going to have like this awkward silence. Yeah, we're exactly. not going to be talking. And I'm going to have to edit and it out. And we're already going on a social media rabbit hole. Yeah, right I know, there. right? We're barely into it and we're already <laughs> yeah. going down the biggest of rabbit holes. But anyway, so, I mean, my first experience of it was probably Bebo. I remember yeah. being, I think it was, it was like 10, maybe 11. Uh, and it's, cr- it's crazy because some have survived because yeah. Facebook and Twitter and that, we're still maybe not as popular as they are now in mainstream as they are now, but we're still about right. I think Facebook was created 2004. Yeah. Twitter was created 2006, something like that. Around um, those times, yeah. And then obviously in the last 10 years, there's been like Instagram and Snapchat and all the other ones. But like like I was saying, I had like literally all of them at once. It's like I had much. Snapchat and I was literally like saying to myself, like, why do I have all these things? Mm. Because I'm not just going on to one to see what my friends are up to or that now. Yeah. Or to speak to my friends, I'm going around all of them to see what notifications I have, yeah. and it's like this massive, 
magical roundabout of pointlessness. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up deleting them all apart from Facebook, I think, because obviously Facebook is like the one where I mostly have everyone you actually yeah. speak to. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not just like some random person from yeah. like 40 miles away or whatever, but um, I think it <laughs> it gets to a point where you're, like, like I just said, you have these so many of them and you're literally going from one to the other and it's just like yeah. a game of pinball of which one, and you go over them, right? So you maybe spend like an hour and a half just, you know, going through these things and I'm... It, it gets to a bit, it's a pointless venture by the end of it. You get tired. Actually, it's exhausting sitting there trying to like keep up with everything constantly at every notification or when you say you, you wake up and then all of a sudden you've got 24 notifications and you're just like, yeah, I actually can't be bothered. And especially yeah, when it's yeah. on multiple platforms. If it's on one platform, it's a bit more bearable. <laughs> but <laughs> if, it, if it's on like m- multiple social media apps, ah, oh, it's just an absolute nightmare. Yeah, it is. It is like juggling stuff mm. at that point, right? It is There's like not enough hours in the day, like multitasking. <laughs> I know, right? And it's crazy because at the end of the day, none of it really matters. Nah, because all you do, you just sat there festering, looking at either your phone or yeah, your TV or, or well, yeah, you're liking pictures of dogs screen. doing backflips yeah. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Wishing, wishing that you were there, you know. Go outside. Yeah. Go outside. Yeah, well, that's crazy, right? Like, it's like, oh, that looks awesome. Why can't I do that? It's like, well, you probably can. But you're you're <laughs> you choosing just... consciously to sit there and watch someone else doing it and think to yourself, why can't I do that? Oh, I'm going to tip this guy for that. What? <laughs> yeah, well, I think, um, like, social media is definitely having, like, a massive influence. Oh, yeah. Not just on the way that we socialise now, mm. but if you think back to stuff like, do you remember the Cambridge Analytical stuff? Oh no! It, it was um, it was a company that was using social media sites, I believe, uh, to influence people on certain elections and stuff like that. Oh right! Okay. And this was around about the time of uh, the whole Donald Trump getting elected, uh, Brexit referendum, so on, yeah, and so on. And th- there was a big kind of like scandal that came out about it, obviously, because they had been, uh, you know, ma- manipulating you know, social media sites to influence yeah. people on their decision. And this is the thing, it does influence people on what you see, right? Mm-hmm. Most people, whether people like it or not, get most of their information from the internet now. Yeah, well, yeah, the first thing we do, if we're stumped... Is Google it. We Google it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and we're not, yeah. like, trying to, like, you know, be elites or anything. So no, we, no, we no. don't do that, because we do. We do, yeah. I'm on Facebook every day. Um, I try not to be on it as much. I do like actual social interaction. Yeah. Hence why we do these podcasts. Yes. <laughs> and you know we're that up ourselves we have to film them and yeah, release exactly. them to the internet we very very, very vain <laughs> and watch ourselves <laughs> but yeah it, like, I think it just influences most things you know popularity I've got social I've, stigma all that kind of thing I've got something um, which I wrote down it was uh, to do with influence is, mm. um, have you ever watched Black Mirror is this the the series on Netflix where it's got a lot of kind of relatable real life stuff and it plays like a story through someone in the episode and whatnot? Kinda, yeah. It's it's almost like a real weird way there's a, a a real weird way of looking at life. So right. it's saying like um that there's an episode where they basically everything's done on an app and the more likes you get, the basically the more people speak to you, the more friends you actually seem to have, and the better things, the better that their life mm. becomes. But then they realize when they do one thing wrong, like out of the popular kind of group, how they fall and they end up right yeah. back at the bottom. And it's like, like they, they play it so well that you're watching the the rise and you're like, you know, you know what's going to happen. You're like instantly, you're like, you're going to turn into like a me, say a mean girl, and then all of a sudden you're just going to plummet. And she does, she plummets right down to the bottom and then realizes like, this is an app. Why does this matter? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's the whole black um, black mirror style of basically saying like social media does control a lot. Yeah, it, it can lot. dictate Every, of how it, a lot your life's exactly. gonna go, right? And yeah. it is addictive. People are addictive to likes. Well, the likes, shares, the attention, the notification, the buzz in their pocket, all of it. It's like that the dopamine effect. Yeah, you know, there's, there's something in our brains that when it starts, we can't stop. <laughs> like with the dopamine effect, uh, when you bring that up it's like i think we've all done that at some stage i think yeah. we've all um i don't think we don't think we should be ashamed to admit this because i don't think it's a it's a personal reflection of who we are i think it's just the way that uh this technology is i don't want to say interfacing with our brain because that sounds a bit kind of you know futuristic kind of yeah uh hollywood blockbuster film kind of talk yeah. but yeah. uh you know for me personally right i i know as much as it sounds vain and a lot of people probably won't admit it 
if I put like a picture up or even like one of these podcast posts and someone likes it, I'm instantly drawn to that. Well, exactly. Yeah, it's 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 nice, especially for what you say with the podcast. It's like yeah, being recognised. Mm-hmm. But, but I, d- I do also think when I do feel like that, I always take a step back and like you know, whoa, look, it, it got me again. Yeah, like I'm right. doing this without even consciously realising it. it you it's know? happening. Yeah, it's 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 grabbing hold. <laughs> so. It's almost kind of like humans and technology becoming one in a sense. I know that sounds a bit extreme, but it is kind of like it's tapping into our um, subconscious emotions really well, and our subconscious need yeah for sure for, for well reassurance and likes and <laughs> do you think like when people put stuff up um in, you know including us mm. they can be used as a way to like get some kind of self validation or self kind of acceptance of oh you know you know people like me people like what i'm doing and stuff like that as hard as like it, it can be to admit yeah well yeah some I, I see where you're coming from with that and yeah i do agree i do agree um. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So basically, yeah, I just, I basically, yeah, I just agree with that. Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I mean, it's, I mean, social media has, like, it's like you say, it has such an effect, and it controls what we buy. Yeah. As well, you know, I mean, it controls what you see. It it controls what adverts are released to you through keywords that you search, mm. and they do it in. It's obviously it all runs by an algorithm that's put into the actual social media app itself. But this is all, we allow all that to happen because yeah. we allow them to use Well, it's quite openly understood that mm. like, these companies are um, harvesting our data from us. Yeah. And it's almost like, it's like storing it. I always use the analogy of like our data is the new version of oil. You know how mm. oil's always been the, the one big resource that people yeah. have always made money off of now? That is now uh, our data and probably our subconscious thinking, right? Definitely. In terms of... Like you said, you can search something and then five minutes later it's in your face in some kind of marketed form, uh, you know, on Facebook, so on, so on. Uh, And the chances are when something's right in your face like that, you can resist anything but temptation, the immortal world words of Oscar Wilde, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to buy it, which then makes the business money. And it's it's actually... As sinister as it is, it's a very good business plan, right? <laughs> it <laughs> works. It does. It works. Well, it's effective, right? And it Cause it is tar- it's marketing, which is targeted to what we search for. Yeah. And it's like, that's what business is about, but making exactly. money. But I suppose and there's also about of, knowing the market. There's a guess, a moral question of, uh, is it okay to be exploited like that? And it, I suppose we're kind of accepting it because like I've said, it, this is yeah. well publicized that this is going on. Like there's no kind of big secret been um revealed like we've yeah. known this for numerous amounts of years now and the fact that we're just kind of like we just accept we're just it. cool with it, yeah. yeah we're just like oh well i it's guess i guess they're kind of looking at all my algorithms and data and stuff like that and they're just yeah they're just aiming every advert they can at mm-hmm. you and like i think when we like sometimes business can take uh advantage of uh addiction in a way in terms of you get well. You get people who are addicted to online shopping. Well, so, exactly. Yeah. But like, for example, to put it in an analogy from something that isn't social media, with like tobacco and cigarettes and stuff like that, they put, keep putting the price up, and they like they take away all the cheap options. Right? You remember there used to be like um, a three a pack. three and one and stuff like that. Yeah. All this kind of stuff that was cheaper it was like five pounds. Ended up going up to like seven, eight. So it got more expensive, and then they just got rid of it. But they're it's a very smart way that these. Um, like lay out saying, oh, well, this is going to stop people. No, it's not. But it's not. <laughs> exactly. It just means you know they're going to invest more money because you know that they can't stop what they're doing because of... The, like, I read a, a book from a guy called Alan Carr, not the comedian. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's Jimmy Carr, I think you'll find, sir. That's why I'm here to correct you. But um, Jimmy Carr's amazing. Though. Yeah, Jimmy Carr is amazing. But... Um, so yeah, he, he wrote a book on, on stopping smoking, right? And and one of the things that I took away from it personally was he was talking about the the brainwashing of uh, people when it comes to smoking. Because a lot of people think smoke, quitting smoking is hard, can't do it. It's like this really strenuous thing. But that is also kind of promoted through, uh, like on packets, like, you know, the Surgeon General warning, you've got people like the nasty ass throat and stuff. Yeah. And all these kind of horrible depictions of what your life is. And body will look like if you continue smoking for an extended period of time and whatever. Yeah. Um, but that actually causes people to continue smoking because that causes stress. And when you're stressed, you, you keep smoke. smoking yeah. and you keep the 
uh, the addiction going because uh, what he was trying to say is the addiction in terms of the nicotine addiction that is the addictive substance in stuff like cigarettes is that small and it's it's like a physical addiction but the bigger addiction is the one in your mind in terms of the brainwashing and all that that goes on with you know all smoking's hard to stop because yeah. if someone's told something's harder to do the chances of them doing that are less less uh, likely lot, yeah they don't feel supported either then. Yeah, exactly. Like straight away, you've, you're like, you're already with the world against you. <laughs> and you know, like this... you got to try harder. I think this guy got three, four million people mm. off cigarettes. He didn't... He, he, well, this... I think as well as he was relatable because he had actually been a smoker of like 100 cigarettes a day. Like he wasn't someone that just came into this like, you know, I'm going to stop the world from smoking because I don't believe it. And that. Like he'd, he had lived experience yeah. of, of being a... Actual uh, yeah, and nicotine addicts. But like, what to get back to the social media thing? I think that's kind of what they do in terms of this of mm-hmm. exploiting it. Of well, we've got your data. We're going to put something right in front of your face because we know that when it's that in your face, because most of the time, if you see something in a window and you're tempted to buy it, you can just walk away. That's but true, with yeah. your phone, it's literally attached to you now. So that you know, subconscious. Here it is. You need to buy it. Oh, guess yeah. what? We slashed it by fifty yeah, percent. You know, exactly. all, all this kind of stuff. That is with you constantly, and they know that they're going to break you down, mm-hmm. and you're going to pay that money. Well, that's the thing. I mean, like social, the social media now it's it's branching over everything. It's branching into online games, like on your phone as yeah, well. Yeah. I mean, your games obviously have your communities where you all have your chats and everyone's chat. It's it's in everything, and it it is scary when you actually sit there and think about it. you. You can't get away. The only way to get away from it is to throw almost everything electrical. Out of your house. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And go live in the woods. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. literally the only way you're probably going to get away from Start doing like press ups, use a tree as like a pull up bar and all no, that. That's, that's the only way that we can become mountain man. Break the system. <laughs> Big bad job. But like going back to addiction for a second, in terms of this, I, I did a bit of research on a BBC article that had been suggested, not saying this is fact, but I could see where they were going with this, that tweeting, so the act that you do on Twitter when you post something you know whatever yeah um can be as addicting or more addicting than smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol and you know like what what do they say about smoking cigarettes is like more addictive than heroin or something so you're seeing the scale that they're they're comparing this to that is quite brutal yeah i mean i I get people's addiction to you know uh for attention i get that but then that's just it's not saying a good kind of mental state for us though is it no it's like we need this validation from total strangers. Yeah. We just, we just need it. It's not even so much to be noticed. Because if you post something publicly, everyone's going to notice it. They may not engage with it, but everyone at some point is going to come across it if you post things public, you know? It like can, when you do it on Facebook, instead of posting it to your own page, you can post public. Yeah. It's one of those things. It depends on wh- which way you want to go. I mean, are you going to do it on your page so it's only your friends? Mm. Uh, so you only want validation from there? Or are you going to yeah. do it publicly because you want worldwide validation or you know yeah it's it's crazy it depends on how how much they want it I suppose. yeah and i think it kind of numbs us as well some things like if you see someone put something up on, on facebook clicks or some social media site of people going through a hard time which obviously is a serious thing regardless of whether it's on social media or in person yeah but a lot of people are like you know oh, private message me and stuff like that and if you were in that situation personally you wouldn't just be like oh private message me you'd be yeah. like, you'd be going through it with them having like this in-depth conversation where it's just it can kind of almost become like an afterthought because it's digitized. It's, yeah. There is a there's a difference between there's this it's getting more of a gray area now, but there is a difference between you know the virtual world and reality, right? You act, you react and act differently on both things, in you know my belief anyway. Um, be like you know. There's a lot. Of but I see where you're going with that when you say virtual reality one. I see where you're going with that where you can recreate yourself and become this other thing that you want to be for mm. people to like <laughs> so. well like it's it's when like i see people on, on social media mm. um and then i see some people in real life it's it's almost like i know it's, have a it's, persona. it's more i know it's going to be different right because one's text mm. and one is actually seeing the people and how they act and stuff like that yeah. but you can tell that there's there is a difference there's a different part of our mind that goes into the social media side of things mm. than me and you just sitting here now. Yeah. Like, if we were having this conversation over Facebook Messenger, it wouldn't be going this in-depth. No, it wouldn't be. No, you're right, because it's, it's, this is more natural response instead yeah. of sat there reading something, taking it in, and trying to figure out what to reply. This is mm-hmm. an actual natural response. And I guess my kind of concern going forward is, because I think, you know, 
my generation especially was probably like the last on the border of not being introduced to this stuff immediately yeah. whereas nowadays so many young people are being introduced to this you know they have to be as as early as you can possibly think right yeah so we've had the opportunity to learn how to speak like this and, and so on through schooling and you know from you know lived social experience of I mean, I Maybe didn't. I didn't people. have a mobile a mobile phone or anything like that. Like, no, I didn't have one until I was fourteen. Was, you wanted to get a hold of me, you just shouted to the wind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. calling on people. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, I used to go knock on people's doors. Didn't uh, wasn't always like a message. I mean, nowadays I message people, but it's more so to say, "Look, are you free?" Yeah, and yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, right. I'm on my I way. try and keep it as quick as possible because yeah, I yeah. don't want it to like drag out into. Oh, we're just speaking on right. the internet now. Yeah, you know? I don't want it to be. I'm going to talk to you now about what I'm going to talk to you when I see you in five mm. minutes. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't I I don't see the point in it, and I just it, it's not that it annoys me, but it's almost like a trigger, you know. I'm just like people are cause they do they depend on social media so much, and you're like, why can you not ha- like speak to someone normally, but when they walk away, you're going to be flooding them with a message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like what, I said this is going along with your point where people they they really are different. Mm-hmm. Like they have a different persona on social media what they actually are like in real life yeah and it's because of that like we say that that need that people have that addiction that they have for people to like this mm-hmm. person that they've created on social media but when you meet them in real life they're not like that yeah they, they can have moments where you can see oh you are a little bit like that but you're not actually like that yeah like, and we're not <laughs> accusing people of being fake here yeah, we're just yeah. we're saying it's, that it's just what it it's is just like. a different side of the the, the yeah. coin like People you know, are obviously more comfortable on the social media yeah, than yeah. what they are in real because life. Because it takes so many kind of um, elements away from socialising mm-hmm. in Definitely. terms of, you know, eye contact, uh, hand gestures, mm-hmm. all these kind of subliminal things that we do. Uh, like, for, you know, for example, with me, like, you know, I've got autism, right? So mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, that are on the spectrum and stuff probably prefer this way of speaking to people because it yeah. takes all that kind of sensory anxiety uh, triggering stuff out of it yeah but i've also appreciated the fact that i've like gained social skills and that to this point that i i see the benefit that it does for my own well-being mm-hmm. as as you know well just you know practically in terms of you know, don't yeah. know going into a shop and it's like can, we feel like we can come out of this and feel like a bit more intellectual because we've had a conversation yeah well <laughs> it just it, feel, it feels like there's almost like a um, it's almost like a conclusion, like a release to this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think yeah. social media, and I think it's probably... Uh, it can be misinterpreted on social media. Well, not media. just that. It always feels like you're you're left needing more. Do you know what I mean? It never feels like anything's finalised. Because the yeah, conver- oh, like, yeah. And you see it, right? Because the conversation doesn't end, you start a new one. Your whole chat log, or whatever you want to call it, is kept. Yeah. So you see the conversation you had two days ago with a friend, or three days ago. I know you can um, consciously delete it and stuff but you don't you know what i mean you just most of the time you don't but uh you know my kind of thought process on it is is because young people are lit this is literally how young people even before they're in some years of school of learning how to socialize like like you know um i was gonna think of the word orthodox is that a word have I just made a dung goof there? Or? Like an unorthodox. <laughs> yeah. And, well, the orthodox way of finding, a, you know, becoming so a social creature like we are now. Well, yeah. But, like, uh, you know, they're introduced to social media, if not before, around the exact same time. And, this, you know, there's more time at home than there is at school and, and social situations. So you're going to yeah. learn it's, more from this now than you are from the orthodox way of, with the way we done it, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, exactly. Um, I, I don't. I don't want to sound like elites, like back in my day. Yeah, but you no, know, no, like no. But you're right though. We we didn't have access. Like I say, we didn't have access to all this stuff mm. until we were much older. And by that point, we already had social. We, we had we already, like we already knew how to go. Like, yeah, there it's, was. It's not like it's something you learn, but we're already comfortable enough to go. around. I think, like in your houses. early years, it's kind of imprinted on you how you're going to act as a person, right? Oh yeah. Obviously, you change that as a teenager and I, an I, adult, I, I, and you become more mature than that. But there is certain elements to you that stay with you for life from the importance of um you know childhood yeah it's like when you see all the young ones nowadays and they've all got like these crazy smartphones Mm -hmm. and i'm just like i get it i mean some of them some of it's for safety but i mean 
Do they really need a smartphone? Yeah. <laughs> and then, really, you know, like, I it, it can be for safety, right, babe? You look at the internet dangers. Well, exactly. They're, yeah. on, they're on Twitter. They're, on, they're all on Snapchat. They're on Instagram. They're on everything. And you're just like, this is just madness. Do you think that'll, in years to come, when, like, uh, I know this is hopefully still far, far away, but when, like, our kind of generation is, is gone, well, not even gone, but, like... Have you watched that film, The Circle? No, I haven't. With Tom Hanks in it and uh, uh, what's her name, Hermione. Oh, Emma Watson. And Emma Watson in it. It's all basically about. It's basically the circle is like a social media platform place. Right. Okay. So she has to go work there and basically create all these mad ideas, but then she realizes there is no privacy because mm. she's monitored all day. Everyone can like log in and start speaking to her at any point. Yeah. yeah. And, start, and she just realizes like this is not actually good because. She, She's realizing everyone's getting targeted again mm-hmm. on what they need and they can rake certain prices up. And oh, that's crazy. But it's another outlook on, once again, if social media got to that point. Yeah. That's exactly what it would but be it, like. It feels like it is going to become the norm, right? Yeah. That like, this is, this is the, the new age of that is going to become socializing. Mm-hmm. The, the thing that we're doing right now is going to be extinct. Yeah. Like, it, it might not happen immediately, but it is going to happen. But the way that it's currently set up, yeah. And social media plays a massive role. I mean, that's like that's what it is. It literally says social media is connecting, socializing, and media together, right? Yeah. And I mean, one thing for me personally that like I hate about social media is that I and I can never get away from it, even like not like it. I mean, it is my fault because I still it's that whole in your face again, and you're like, oh, what's this? And it's like, oh, I'm feeling down again in that now. Yeah. But it's the fact that you literally cannot get away from information. Information is being. I mean, I watched a little bit of this uh, documentary on Netflix. You probably heard of it, the social dilemma. Have you seen this with all the yeah, the yeah. people from the big companies and that talking about it? And like, they, I think they go into information overload in that because it's not just speaking to your friends or speaking to other people. There's news stories. There's yeah. uh, posts. It recommends you posts. There's adverts. All this stuff going into your brain at once. And I know that has a massive impact on me and my. Uh, not my mental state, but my mood. Yeah. Like, uh, sometimes I'll go on my, my Facebook feed. I'll come off of there and I'll be like, why have I done that? It's literally just like Set inject, off, injected poison into myself or something yeah. to make me feel that bad, you know? No, I get what you mean. It's, yeah, it it, can, it is it is a massive effect on your mood and it that, that can mess you up for like the whole day. And it's all, mm-hmm. like you say, all just because you went on your news feed and just had a little scroll about. Nah, something like yeah. you say, sometimes it can be absolute poison um it can be used to spread poison i mean in, in the latest one what poor little uh rashford yeah him and uh, the other two england players as well they yeah. missed penalties and now the whole well well worldwide people are getting a bit nasty about it yeah. i mean like grow up people like yeah it's it's not there for you to just single someone out that guy's a young lad yeah a lot of pressure was placed on him. yeah he missed a penalty big whoop yeah, big, yeah, big actual work. people make mistakes. It would, you know, is the reality of do people, no, not even that. Do but people, people forget when David Beckham scoofed it, yeah, over the bar. Yeah, I remember watching that. And even Cristiano Ronaldo went out afterwards and stomped on the penalty spot. Did he get ridiculed? No, no, no exactly. <laughs> but like, I think there's there's obviously a lot of people, which I think is a legit point as well. A lot of people are, are braver on social media to say insults and, um, you know, give. It's like this toxic abuse, yeah, exactly. Like, because you wouldn't do that yeah, like if you've seen the person in in the street or that, or exactly. I mean, maybe, maybe some would, but like most people wouldn't. The majority of people um, are, fake are are kind of corrupted by the power of they can't get to me, yeah. and I think it kind of gives you um, a insight into people's subconscious thinking, right? Because you learn a lot about a person when they're kind of thinking they're safe. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there's yeah, not going to be you. repercussions for what they do. Uh, so I always think that's an interesting thing but because we're kind of touching on it like most of what we've discussed about social media so far with the ad not so much the advertising but with the um, socializing it's more you know your friends and uh, you know sharing stuff with your friends and you know people that you've made new friends with and that and I suppose yeah. that's all a positive thing but a lot of social media is so toxic mate like it it's is. it doesn't matter which one you're on either. It's <laughs> full of it. <laughs> it's some of it's just mind numbing crap though. Yeah, and it can be anything. It literally yeah. any topic, right? Like sometimes I look at like political conversations and I kind of expect it there because you're obviously going to have people with polarized opinions. And I suppose that's yeah. the same for every conversation. But with politics, it, you know it's gonna get nasty real quick because it's nasty from like the politicians themselves, right? It's so that feeds down into the supporters and everything. 
But like even something is I don't know, like you said, sport. I see people literally, you know, going at each other, like you know that they've wronged them in some way or, or something like that, and like saying you know trying to demean them as a person, and yeah. and the other person retaliates by doing the same, and they're you can tell these people aren't you know happy when they do this kind of stuff, and even though like, there's all these like laughing emojis and they're trying to make it like you know I'm I'm just having a laugh here and that you can yeah. tell that's that is toxic, not just in the sense of what uh, people around viewing it is, but the person posting that, the posting uh, receiving that and posting back. Those people can't be happy doing that. No, not at all. Because I'm not even happy looking at it as a third party that had nothing to do with it, you know? Especially, especially when it's, like, well, as we said, goes to the extremes. Um, like, when, when it gets racist. Uh, geez, yeah, exactly, yeah. Too far. Like, why? What's, like, there is, there's no benefit from it. Because <laughs> it, it is like a mob at some times, yeah. right? And like, it can, it, you are, it, a mob is a good way of looking at it because it will t- only takes one person and it steamrolls. Yeah, and yeah. All of a sudden, everyone's got an opinion. Everyone knows what, what's what. It's like, none of you were pro- actually probably there. You just have no idea what actually happened. Yeah, yeah. And yet, you're all jumping on the bandwagon just to have a dig at someone yeah, yeah. Like, it's, like it's literally say, like you, you know you're, you're, you're you think you're in your little safe spot when you're not mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like people are going to find out people will be able to find out people don't not everybody has a vi uh, what is it, a vp a vpn is it yeah is VPN. that the thing that like puts you off the grid or something like that well, it pings your ip yeah, yeah all yeah. over the world isn't it? so not everyone has one of them so yeah i mean you're gonna get caught at some point and like that's the thing like because obviously we're t- going back to young people for a second young people are involved in this like You've got to think that there was probably young people involved in the whole racist abuse towards the footballers and stuff like uh, that. Definitely. And the reality of that is, uh, you know, that's a criminal offence. Yeah. Like that's if, horrendous behaviour. Like it's yeah, it's, it's disgusting it behaviour, yeah. right? And that's something that's never going to leave your criminal record. If they do, well, they probably will find out who you were, and then that affects you for the rest. I'm not trying to like condone anything what they've done or anything, but like a lot of kids, like they're not fully developed into adults yet, and people do yeah. change, right? Um, like we've said, kids are cruel when we go back to the school days episode. <laughs> but they're even crueler when they don't think there's any kind of, you know, consequences. So they'll, you know, but that kind of consequence is going to affect them for the rest of their life because you, you know, when you get, uh, I don't know, charged or whatever with this kind of offence, you know, the chances of getting a job in that are just, you know, decreased by like times hundred. You know, yeah. and all like all the stuff that goes into later life, and this is all through the whole different side of the world right because it's almost is impacting again on the real world that way yeah uh so yeah but the, like the, the toxic part of it it does make me just question like why am i on there <laughs> because even though i'm not taking part in it it's almost like i just find it wherever i go mm-hmm. do you know what i mean like i can't find a comment section i i should just avoid comment sections but like, again like you see a post it's in your face, you're interested in it, so you, yeah. you end up in the comments that, you know, like, I'm not saying, you know, I should obviously consciously try and make a better effort not to go into these things, uh, the comment sections to depress myself or whatever. Yeah. But you just see it and it's like, what is the point? There, No one is getting any kind of benefit from seeing or partaking in, in that kind of... In most of the chats. Yeah. yeah. No, I see what you mean. Yeah, when you when you get someone who posts something up and like you, you you can see what they're doing, they're wanting someone to be like, oh yeah, good, good effort, or you know, oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's not bad, cool. And then you get someone like just just get in the bin. Yeah, Why exactly. You, it's like you should, and they do. They they go they go. It gets from zero to a hundred real fast. Yeah, like, yeah. You should. Like, you've seen it. It's like oh, you should go die and yeah. You're yeah. just like oh, <laughs> really. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What the hell is your problem? It's like there's no need for that. Just yeah. Get get off! Uh, but that people people get really badly affected by it. You, mm. I mean, you've heard about it. It turns into like cyberbullying essentially, and that goes on on the social media. But who do they report it to? You, you know when you like um, they say you can report a chat. Mm. Um, like, have you ever tried to try to do it? No, I'm bald. it well, it, it ain't easy, mm. and I've never ever had anyone contact me back about reporting someone for either racism it's just kind of or pure like, hate chat or you anything think it's like just that. like trying to save face at that point like we've got the button there yeah basically so they can't do anything because we are they, doing stuff you know, about it the only one i found that did was actually smite a very very smite. toxic game very very toxic oh right game, okay right mm-hmm. and um yeah basically i was just new just new on it total noob knew i had no idea what was going on I was trying to figure out loads of stuff at the same time and i had no chance and i was yeah. like wow um 
but I, my own team, it was pure hate for like yeah. just like 20 minutes of this game. And I was like, do you know what? I was like, just, re- I'm going to report them. So at the end, you get a little report button. And I just says like, what was it? I was just like, well, basically just like pure hate speech. So hit that. I got a message back the next day saying he'd been banned for a week. I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but that, I only got that through Smite. That wasn't through yeah. Microsoft. But is, is that, is that because like, from my understanding, at least like, like online kind of games and stuff like that have human moderators it would appear no this was um it was in-game chat no yeah yeah but i would imagine someone like human actually had looked at your oh that case. must have it must have so I, I don't think stuff like facebook i think there was a conversation um on a program about this the other night mm. uh so a human moderator can actually look at the case look at what someone said yeah and then view it whereas i think facebook and twitter and stuff like that use algorithms to deal with stuff like this they pick on words they yeah pick, yeah i think with smite i don't think it was a human moderator i think what happens with smite is it's like um it's almost like a warning so you, you depend on how many people report this player mm-hmm. they obviously get banned so obviously between when i when i reported him and someone else had obviously had another run in with him and he'd done the same thing with them they had reported him yeah. so they must have received say we'll say 10 reports and well, within because I, I do think the service. I know that I mean because it's so frequent, it's probably going to be a difficult thing to em- employ for because you would need so many people to do it. But I think human moderators would make a difference in the terms definitely. of definitely. Like, cl- like going back to, to the put yourself in the situation and read the conversation instead of just do yeah. what you say, pick an algorithm and pick on keywords. Yeah, like uh, going back to the the racist abuse to the footballers for a second. One of the things that I think was Instagram. So technically, Facebook because Facebook owns Instagram and that we're saying. Uh, one of these um, comments that had been reported, one of the most reported comments was a bunch of emojis that are, are racist to what they uh, the person of the skin colour that they were uh, aiming that towards. But because it wasn't a word that was part of their algorithm, they were like, this uh, comment is not deemed as racist. But you could right, clearly yeah. see from the outside as a human that that comment was racist because of what its intent was behind it. But yeah. I suppose they can hide, but oh, it's just emojis. But you know... You know what they, that means. They have different intent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if a human moderator looked at that, you would only be able to come to one conclusion. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, got, you got racial intent, man. Just get off. <laughs> but yeah, like, like we're saying, like when it comes to toxic behavior and that on social media or just mm. whatever kind of toxicity that there is on there, it's usually people, no, mo- no it definitely is people that can't be happy. Because like another thing that the BBC article uh, says is that it also affects self-esteem, social media, relationships, which how many times, th- this is another th- important thing we should branch off t- into it for a second. How many times have you been in like a personal social situation mm-hmm. and you're having a conversation, literally mid-conversation, the person that you're with, it maybe even been you, because I have, know I've done it as well, just like takes their phone out and starts looking at it. And then yeah. you, you can see their attention switch for what, maybe like 30 seconds to a minute. And they they were like, okay, say that again. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. right in the midst of it, and you're a bit like, Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I've came to a um a new a new outlook on things like that? I've decided to put into any kind of relationship what I get back. Mm. That's my new way of looking at it. So if people are gonna like you say stand there and be on their phone and then have the well, we'll say audacity to be like, oh sorry, <laughs> we'll say say that again. I'm just gonna sit there with my phone out and be like, oh sorry, what? Yeah, you're on the timer, sir. Sure. Yeah. You made me wait 25 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> you know You've got 13 like, left to go. It's going to be one of those, give what you receive. So if, if you know if people are going to do that with me, I'll do that with them. That's my new kind of outlook on things. And you know what? It it weeds out a lot of things which on social media, you know, and if, if people are like, unless you speak to me, I'm not speaking to mm. you kind of thing. And it just, you know, when you get to the point where you're like, it's just childish. It's a social media app. Yeah. <laughs> but... I get so frustrated about it, and I'm guessing you do as well. Yeah. But that's because we we're from an era where we were we were newly introduced to it. Mm. We we weren't introduced to it from such a young age. Well, we're almost it's at the point where it is an everyday life. We're now. we're kind of in a struggle where we know we, what's we, going yeah. on, but at the same time, we're still kind of in the the group of we, we, we are. Can't really we're kind, all we're, of it. we're <laughs> kind of we're kind of <laughs> part of that social media con- uh, culture. Yeah. Because we do these things that we're talking about, maybe not as often, but we do do them. But we also have this other side of us, which is like, you know, why are we doing this? Yeah, we we know we know that this is obnoxious, <laughs> and we know that like we're being rude to people if we take our phone out in the midst of conversation or whatever. And like one bit thing for me is when I had Instagram, right? 
and all the people that I'd follow, it would make me feel like dirt just because of how every, every other person that I follow's life looked great. But yeah. you've also got to remember that can like comparison will take confidence from anyone. I've mentioned that quote a couple of times because yeah. it will. Like if you compare, um, like if we were to take our podcast right now, which is still in the very early days, mm-hmm. and we do want to grow it and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Um, and we compared it to I don't know, like one of the big podcasts. We're gonna feel really bad about ourselves because guess what? We're not <laughs> at that stage <laughs> no. yet. We're nowhere near it. <laughs> no. no. But no, no, um. No. I think like that's what I was like doing on social media. I see people like maybe on the on the beach and mm-hmm. at, like a lavish resort and stuff like that. But you got to remember, like a lot of social media can be fake. Yeah. In terms of not fake as in like oh you know they went on you know like a site like Canva and drew up all the imagery and everything like <laughs> yeah. that, but like fake in the sense of you know that's not real life for them. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's not like they're doing that every day. No, it's it, like they're, t- they're taking a couple of photos on holiday. Yeah, f- specifically for social media, right? Mm-hmm. I, I seen a podcast recently where a guy was saying it's better to produce for social media than consume. If you produce for social yeah. media, you're fine, you'll be happy. If you consume social media, you won't. And I, I, there is an element of truth to that, I believe. I would agree with that, yeah, because like I say, most of the most of the stuff on social, well, as you can tell, I actually get quite irritated speaking yeah. about social media. So it's one of those things. I've always been the kind of person that I just prefer to speak to people. Mm. I prefer actual human interaction. Um, I think I could probably get by on things like FaceTime and things like that I may I hate speaking to people on the phone as well. I have it's an anxiety thing. Yeah, it's it it's it's awkward, like isn't it? it? Like yeah. you know when like you're on the phone to someone, um, I don't know the bank or something. Like yeah. you're trying to sort <laughs> something out, and then you'll you'll hear them go like, "Okay, if you just wait a couple of minutes and you hear the keyboard tap." And like, there's nothing more excruciatingly painful for me. It's just you know, like the worst part is your telephone voice. Oh yeah, so oh, we, especially we all, we when there's speak, an echo all, and you can hear it. Yeah, like, it's like we all speak normally, and then out of nowhere, you're like, oh hello, hello, <laughs> yes, hi there. <laughs> like, even like when I've uh, when I listened back to the first episode of this, I was like, do I really speak like that? <laughs> like, what I hear now compared to what's recorded and what's put yeah. out there, I just I don't believe is me. I do the same thing. It's like I hate hearing myself when I leave a message. Mm. Oh, oh no. I mean, I used to hate doing, like, I think we might have actually mentioned this in the, the school days episode, but I used to hate doing public talks. Yeah, yeah. We'll and, like, because they yeah. would always show you at the back at the end. <laughs> and it was, like, you had to go through this five-minute talk. Everyone's looking. Yeah. And with, it's kind of weird because, you know, I guess you can never outrun your demons with what we're doing now, right? Because <laughs> we're doing, like, the longest public talk. And yeah. then, ev- no, not everyone, like, 31 people are going to watch. How many? We've made a bit of progression on the subscriber. But front. That, that, that's only on YouTube, though. I mean, yeah. Facebook. We've got a bigger following on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I'm quite proud of. You know, I'm enjoying the Facebook interaction. Oh, we're, we're getting too consumed. No, <laughs> we're being hypocrites. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about it. Uh, so yeah, like I mean, you can we can talk about how much time people spend on social media and uh, the internet in general, I suppose. Well, right, like some of the stats that I pulled up is the current social media user base. So I believe the world population is around 7.5 billion or 7.8 billion. It's somewhere in that area. And at 3.78 3.78 billion. 3.78 billion use social media. That's what, just over 50%, maybe just at 50%. Yeah, around about the 50% mark anyway. Yeah, so you've got to think that's most of, well, pretty much all of the Western world. You know, because you've got to take into account, like, uh, there's countries that like, are in poverty and stuff and they probably don't yeah. have access to uh, the technology that we, you know, have in more privileged countries and stuff like that. Um, or it's or ones like China and things where it's a bit more controlled. Yeah, <laughs> so you're allowed to change. Yeah, I, well, they got they got rid of Google, didn't they? I yeah. like ten years ago, and I, uh, there's no Facebook without there. It's, I think it's WeChat. I think that's what they they call it. But they, they have their own version of it, but it's um, it's more uh, monitored. Oh yeah, in inverted commas, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no privacy. Uh, so yeah, the average time someone spends on social media a day. It's two hours, 25 minutes. So two hours and 25 minutes for 3.78 billion people. Mm-hmm. Do that math some. No. I'm, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying, two hours, 25 minutes, you could watch the film Heat in that time. It's actually <laughs> a very, very good film that I forgot to put in my top 10 <laughs> film list of all time. So just thought I'd, I'd uh, take one last dig on the film front. Um, mm-hmm. Like So sites like Facebook mm-hmm. are very heavy on businesses now and consumerism. Yeah. Um you know, like we're talking about the ads earlier, and like you know, we can't say that you know we're not a business on there because we promote our stuff on Facebook. Funnily, yeah, enough. we do. So we are part of the system. We're not trying to say, oh, 
why is this happening? It's so wrong. We've not, you know, we do it, but we're just trying we, to. We help. also don't sit on the Facebook page for two hours and twenty five minutes. Well, allegedly, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't. But um, but I mean, it is a useful tool, right? Social mm. media because it is quite powerful in the, the the reach that it has. Well, yeah, I mean, the handy thing for me is the whole. Oh, I suppose it goes along with the technology improving. Is everyone having Wi Fi? Is that that is my benefit? You know, when you go to a bigger city and you have actual city Wi Fi, mm. and you can, for me, that's where I, where it shines the most with me. It's because I'm able to contact people. I just I don't I can't be bothered topping up my phone and getting actual credit. I just no need no need anymore. Not with Wi Fi, you really don't need to be topping up your phone. <laughs> so, yeah. so this is one of those things you can as long as there's like a portable Wi Fi spot somewhere, you're all right. Oh right, okay. Uh, I, thought, I thought you were asking no, me. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, yeah. Like, um, if there is port, if there's Wi-Fi where you're going, you know, then you are, you're all right. You can just yeah. contact whoever. I thought you were asking me if I was all right. I was like, <laughs> well, I'm just having a sip of water, dude. <laughs> Look at that. Just call- a bit parched from always talking. But like, yeah, I think, yeah, like I said, it does help business out a lot. Oh yeah. But at the same time, I guess there has to be a line in the terms of how not desperate, but how far it goes, right? Because like we're saying, it it can well no way. It can, but it is it harvesting is. data to yeah. to get you to to buy from business, and like, it is kind of exploiting the market in a sense of the, like that whole analogy I used with the whole like the way the tobacco companies kind of yeah uh, you know kind of uh, manipulate that kind of you know human subconscious way of thinking as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. So it can cause stress from information overload, which we've kind of already talked about. Uh, can also affect mood, anxiety, and sleep. Sleep's a big one, right? Because social media is on a device, whether it be a phone, a computer, an iPad, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's all blue light, and that's known to activate your mind. And you know, I've done it myself. You know, lying in bed, and I'll be like, oh, I'm quite bored, trying to get to sleep. And that's that's a thing. We're very our bored threshold is now a lot lower than what I think it used to be because of these you have access, yeah. Yeah, because of these social media platforms and the internet in itself, right? Yeah. Like, you know, back in the day <laughs> I just literally did it. I said that I wasn't gonna say back in my time <laughs> and I literally just did it. I have been outed as a fraud. Back in my day. I but uh, when I when I was like um in nursery uh going into childhood early primary school and stuff like that of, of course there was stuff like video games and, and and that around but there was also like oh well tv's done for today even on the tv programs like the tv not it wouldn't cut off but like you know they would just cut to teleshop and 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 yeah yeah no, no one's watching the veggie blender for three hours unfortunately <laughs> or maybe oh. you do we don't judge on this podcast but or buy this jewelry set yeah, no, exactly, yeah. QVC and all that. Yeah. But there was a cut-off time, right, for, like, cartoons and, you know, whatever. I, I do remember exactly what you're on about, yeah. Whereas now, it's 24-7. Like, wow. in terms of the internet as well, you can watch anything you want in, you know, a search click. You've got yeah, Netflix, you've got Amazon Prime as well, all these different outlets to watch anything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the the world is your oyster for wherever you want it to be. Yeah. And yeah. that is 100% going to affect um, body clock and s- cycles of, you know, just everyday life, right? Like, with the, the effect in, on people's mood, definitely. Um, like we say about the highs and the lows, people like your post, people don't like your post. But the anxiety of it as well, like, I get, I do suffer anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, I have quite bad anxiety. But obviously, there's, the, the way that they try to explain it is fight or flight. Um, you either kind of, well, the way that I see it is you either stand like a deer in headlights or you're going to get out of the way. So it's one of those moments where I try to tackle things. I try to I try to do it. I try to put myself out there, get into social situations rather than getting lost into a social app. Yeah, for sure. Um, I find it healthier, you know, definitely. It hel- like as we've discussed, being actual social does help me. Going outside helps me. Breathing a bit of fresh air, getting a bit of sunlight with some friends, having a laugh. It's so much better than sat there, as we say, pulling a pose or oh, smiley face mm. to say I'm home having such a good day it's more oh, you, you've not point. actually left your house yeah you're taking all these photos in your house and you're being like oh I'm having a good day doing what yeah, yeah. what are you doing you're chilling just chill why do I don't need to know you're chilling mm. just send, like, send me a quick message I'm chilling but there is, I mean there is good parts of social media right like um, uh, I'll, uh, one place that I tend to have a look at quite a lot is the, the Murray Wellbeing Hub so yeah. we're actually potentially uh, a bit of a spoiler alert here in September we're potentially collabing on a, a podcast episode with some of the members to talk about mental health so oh, did you get in contact um 
yes, yes, the 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 contract that I have at the yeah. Wellbeing Hub, yes. Nice. Um, but I, I I don't know necessarily it'll be that person, but it, it'll be uh, people that uh, oh, are, are part of the organization. Yeah. So yeah, and the organization, the organization. <laughs> <laughs> They're a very secret bunch of you no. Know, but uh, yeah, the, I I you know I I'm actually a. Uh, Murray Wellbeing champion. Now I haven't actually attended any events yet or that, but it's been recent that I've I've uh, attained this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. The champion. Uh, but I'm I'm actually uh, really interested to see like the work they do and stuff like that. Um, and I actually hope that I get because I've you know I'm sure we're we're gonna go into this at some point. Me and you over our personal mental health struggles, and we'll kind of yeah, go into it in, do, in, yeah. in in depth and whatnot. But uh i always find that there there can be especially in this local area there can be a bit of a a drought for services in in terms of uh on on a human level right because i think when the doctors and that it's all more about medication and what works yeah. with what and stuff you can be the guinea pig for this that and yeah. this and that and tell me which one works for you yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Cheers, uh, Doc. And have you thought about the job center at all? <laughs> <laughs> like, You're just uh, like getting the bin. Yeah. So no, we're looking forward to that episode. But um, it's you know things like that, like you know the charities not getting their kind of uh, promotion out there. It can be good, right? In terms, of, we're not just saying that the the whole world's this uh, evil, sinister business that wants to extort money from you. I mean, there is stuff like that out there. Like you can't yeah, deny true. that that's not the case. But there is a lot of good that goes on it as, as well. Um, but I, I do like I do like going on social media and seeing the happy posts. Yeah, like, you know, like you know the typical oh, a bunch of puppies. Or oh, I love going on watching the dodo where it's always rescuing and I like watching something where it's nice. Something, yeah, something good has came out of me watching this. Like I feel the world's not all bad. The northeast corner, perhaps. Yeah, the north. <laughs> that, that, you know, every it's a notification every other day. I mean, <laughs> so. I mean, I would say I feel good after watching the Northeast Corner, but I can't really say that <laughs> I, I do because then I would be saying I watch my own podcast, and <laughs> yeah. that would sound really, really vain. <laughs> no, but we're doing it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I think I watched back the first one because I was paranoid of what the audio would look like. Yeah. But, um, I, I, I did try the first one, obviously, because you said the audio was bad, and I was like, right, okay, let's... let's it wasn't that bad, it was just a little off. <laughs> it was just a little off. But <laughs> it's not happened since. I said I, would, I said I would fix That's the problem, true. and I followed through. He has, he has, he has stuck to his words. But, uh, so people more active on social media are more likely to develop mental health issues. Most common in young people, so it kind of goes back to this common theme, like, really? young people are the most active on social media right is as you go as, well, as say. you go up the age groups it probably declines a bit right because obviously like we're saying uh the, the gen as you go up the generation kind of ages the less experience they've had with this type of thing or less that they've been no, no, introduced you, to it no, yeah you are totally right my story about my granda i have to go down pretty much every week and see my granda in lossy you know look look Local, local man down in the sea town, and oh my god, it is it's tech support every time. I am not <laughs> IT trained to you know rip out whatever you've done wrong to this grander, but you know sometimes I go around there and I'm like, why have you got it on like just a total white background? What is going on? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you can't even see where the lines are. You're seeing like things which are popping up and saying click OK, and I'm like, you're thinking that's from that site. Well, it's not because you can't see the boxes and you can't actually tell that this is a pop up. He's changed something with the colorblind settings. And I'm like, I'm colorblind. Mm. And I'm like, that's just a white screen with dodgy blue lines here, there, and <laughs> I, everywhere. And I'm like, how can you even make sense of that? And he's like, I can't. I'm like, well, why do you do it? <laughs> you yeah. And I'm like, you're clicking on these adverts that are getting thrown at you on Facebook. And I'm like, and I, I'm terrified that basically, due to his age, some, someone's going to take advantage yeah, of him yeah, yeah. actually not actually knowing what he's doing. Mm. Well, no, that happens... Oh, Even without the internet, right? The phone call. Well, exactly. I suppose it's kind of to do with the internet because they probably look up the phone number and obtain it through that. Somehow, but, anyway. Like you know, you know, uh, one of my grandparents has been uh, nearly victim of that before as well. So yeah. I think it, that is a legit concern, right? Because yeah, I am um, honestly, I'm terrified of it happening to him because they're not as invested in social media, which you, I think. Is they it, don't want to admit they don't know what they're doing. Well, <laughs> my, my grandparent openly admits that they, that, you know, they have no clue about it but at the same time one of the, thing, the benefits of that comes from is they seem a lot happier yeah and just naturally because like i'll be like bringing up stuff like oh do you hear about this do you hear about this and like and they'll always take a positive outlook on it and i'm not like a 
a downbeat person or anything like You're that most of the time. Yeah. But at, at the time, I, I was kind of realizing like this is all the stuff that I've seen, like on like, you know, maybe uploading the uh, podcast link mm. to Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's you know this is like all from that, mm-hmm. and because this person doesn't have that in their life, and you can tell that they enjoy life more because they're not focusing so much on that. and i don't focus on it but it's it leaves um it lingers in my mind i suppose you could say when i, I bring up stuff like that but like you said like there is a risk of um you know ill-natured people that are going to try and take advantage of that exactly in, in there's a people fraudulent who, way well there's people who actually try to take advantage of your own social media like people hack into your facebook mm-hmm. and then people hack or like hacking into people's snapchats and things like that and you're just like why like what i don't understand what they think they're gonna actually benefit from Mm. you know you know what i mean unless the app's actually insecure and stores information on there which it shouldn't be storing and then it's a it's a question of who the who do we speak to about that to find out like you know like because i'm definitely not giving permissions to anyone to steal my information (laughs) and like if you think about it like when you look at terms and conditions for anything Mm. do people do do people read that because it's, it's, us, it's usually like a hundred pages long, and like I said, the harder something is, the less likely people are to do it. Yeah. So people aren't going to read a hundred pages every five minutes. And it's when they, ch- they, they, I can't remember the actual word I'm thinking of, but there is a word that um, that well, there's loads of words that they use, which is like grammatically correct, but no one's bloody used it or no one's actually mm. heard of it in. In years, it's not it's not something you use in everyday conversation. This is one of those fancy words that come up in court. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Where yeah. You're just like what? <laughs> I, was like, I don't even know what that means. Do you and they, they they flood terms and conditions with words like that, so it does it confuses mm. people. So even if you even if someone does take the time to read it, there's very few people who actually fully understand yeah. everything that's getting said because of the way they word it and the words that are used. So most of it is once again, it's a pointless venture because you might one day read it all and still at the end be like. I ain't got a clue what it's about. Yeah. I ain't really got a clue. Just I know that they want to use my information for something. Do you ever feel weird knowing that you're kind of getting exploited like that? Yeah, I don't like it. But that's yeah. why, as you know, like I say, I, I don't, I'm not really on social media that much. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm the, the one thing I'm on mo- mostly at the moment is actually just Spotify for music. I yeah. go on a little music uh, rabbit hole. Also, another home of the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If the video version doesn't do you for it, there's an audio one. I, I do like. I, I have listened to us on Spotify a few times. I do it. Um, I've done it with obviously the ones I'd missed. Mm. So most of the ones I oh the interview. The well, I suppose yeah. that's not vain because no, you I, weren't I, actually I, present exactly. for these ones. Yeah. I, I get to catch up on what was said because uh, I did enjoy watching them back. They were quite good. Um, I'm looking. For, I've not watched the two Jamie's ones yet. I need to sit down and properly watch that one. I think mm. I clicked on it when it was ending the premiere, so uh, I like logged in and I was like, "Why have I only got like five minutes left in this video?" Yeah. I was like, I'm not, "I've not even watched it yet." I was like, well, "What's going on?" And I was like, "Ah, I see. It's because it's premiered." I right. think like see when a lot of people hear what we've been talking about with the whole kind of data collection, yeah, uh, and like you know the the common phrases like your phone's listening to you and stuff. People absolutely lose their mind when they hear that because they automatically think. That is for sinister reasons, right? Which yeah. I suppose is sinister reasons, but not in the way that they think. They're kind of like thinking, oh, what if they're looking for that car window I accidentally broke like 10 years ago <laughs> yeah. to jail me for 25 years? <laughs> and it's like, unfortunately, well, fortunately... I, they don't make money off of that. No, so they're not that's it, that. yeah, exactly. They're, they're not caring about that. Yeah, they exactly. just want to see what you're most likely to buy. Mm-hmm. Or what you're most interested in, yeah. and use that to their advantage for a business. Oh, you searched up skiing. Here's a here's a holiday. Exactly, a hundred percent. And I, I mean, I f- and I think the reason that people freak out about it as much is the general concept that your kind of subconscious thinking is being invaded. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah, everyone. I get what you mean. It's like a feeling of someone's just stolen. You 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 feel people are going to steal from you mm. when you are, you are technically kind of right. They're they're kind of stealing your choice because they're just going to start throwing things at you that you search. You know, it's not yeah. really, it's not so much a choice then. It's, it's like we say, it's focused adverts, isn't it? So we're going to focus adverts on you that searches for skiing and the Alps. And then here we go. Here's like Quicksilver gear. Here's wh- whatever kind of gear for skiing. 
um, and here's like some some holidays to the Alps, and you're just a bit like it's not exactly so much of a choice because they do normally brand it as best deal, don't they? Mm. They they're normally branded as the best deal, and you're like, yeah. oh well, if that's you'll the best never deal. find this deal anywhere else, yeah, unless you go into another social, media <laughs> yeah, site. or unless you actually go. So to the even website. though we lose, we technically win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you go to the website and type in our promo code? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like, I mean, Bebo and MySpace and that must be absolutely raging that they fell away by the wayside. They're like, yeah. we could have been cashing in on so much coin, but unfortunately, it's just the That's big, the, the, the done, big, yeah. the big dogs are the, the still in town. I do remember Bebo. Bebo was one of those ones where you, you just. You just tried to make your page about you. you yeah, tried to yeah, like, yeah, it was more about expression, which because I suppose like MySpace and was stuff as well. Like that and obviously, you're like your, your wallpapers, yeah, yeah. and you could change almost everything, couldn't you? And then you get Facebook, where it's like put your profile pic, a little bit of info, and then flood your page yeah. with whatever you want. Yeah, and, you're like, and you don't even need the profile pic. You know, it's okay. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's <just laughs> whatever. We don't get, we don't care about your originality. Yeah. Just <laughs> use our platform, please. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think that social media companies are too powerful? Without a doubt, yeah. Without a doubt, I, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not, I can't again. This is allegedly I'm not sure on this because I don't do policy and stuff like that, and I haven't actually read too much into it. But I'm pretty sure isn't there something where like, uh, like whenever Facebook and that were getting kind of uh, hassled back in the day, like there was some because they were such big entities and you know are good for the economy in terms of like they make money, right? They make a lot of money. Um, that there was some kind of indemnity given to them, and I, and I know there was like, uh, or immunity given to them, or whatever. Uh, there was some kind of. Do you remember when Zuckerberg was up in front of all these like uh, senators and stuff like that yeah. a few years ago? And I think it was a lot to do with the Cambridge Analytica thing that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, but nothing really came of it, right? Like there, were, even though all this stuff had gone and nothing really happened, there was no kind of sanction or anything that was almost like a not even really a warning that if this had happened or, or whatever and the con- very very hush hush and yeah well it was just or just disappeared you know it's kind of like when like boris and matt hancock go to the mps committee and that and wow. then the next day like a news story breaks about hancock and his whole you know affair and that that he had and breaching his own coronavirus rules and that and you know nothing happens and the worst thing that happened to him was he didn't get his payoff do you know what i mean like exactly, whereas yeah. that had happened to like someone that wasn't in that position in terms fine. of well, <laughs> fine jail jail for the ppe contract yeah. thing whatever you know like um so yeah i guess what i'm trying to say with the whole power thing is i think it is quite worrying of How especially when people they realize they don't have accountability mm. It's not just that. What, I'm going to go back to what you just actually said about that because they can control their own situations. That's the way it comes across, doesn't it? Like, oh, you're gonna, you've got to come here and make an appearance, and then it's like, all right, okay, he'll, he'll mm. make, they make a couple phone calls, and then next thing you know, it's a, right, you don't need to bother, or you're going to have to come show face, take a couple photos, and then we want you to just go away. Yeah, and it's like, right, sound, no thing. You don't have to stop what you're doing. It's just someone needs them ended away yeah you know, get, get out a couple phone calls have been made i don't want to touch this <laughs> yeah. especially like, especially if it's like 100 percent true about the whole election influence well, and exactly that. these companies will have power over who uh governs them do you know what i mean and that's a scary thought right like that is it's terrifying because like, you know at the end of the day social media platforms are now big business you know, the, with all the well, other people have their own businesses on Facebook. We know, we know people who have their own businesses on Facebook, mm. like actual, like their actual businesses where they are getting paid for it and they're making a living off of it. And it's all done on Facebook. Yeah, and it's all thanks to Facebook with focused adverts that they'll. Some people, you know, we, we get the option mm-hmm. with the podcast and the same with like Twitter and Snapchat mm-hmm. and that. I feel like yeah. we're going a bit hard on Facebook considering we, this we is, are. But we're this only, is, we're this is where this podcast is going one. to be promoted. Yeah, of course. It's just because it's I like the a good save one. there. Good yeah, save. It's because it's the biggest one, and obviously <laughs> it's the easiest one for us all to talk about. Because as I've said, it's the only one I it, have. Well, like it is the biggest platform, I believe. Yeah. And like I say, it's the, it's the only platform I have other than WhatsApp. And then, like I say, WhatsApp I use mm. more of just a messaging. Service. I mean, I personally have Facebook, and then the podcast obviously has Twitter. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying the podcast controls its own social media feed. I control the podcast <laughs> social yeah. media feed. Well, we control the podcast we social do. media we feed. Um, but yeah, like I don't have Instagram and Twitter and that for. 
personally I, I did mm. and then I just realised like this is just way too much way too much I mean like I didn't fully understand Twitter do you know that, that that's one well, thing well it's literally it the first thing that comes to your head write it down and it's, it's out there to see and the thing is like you're that's probably where information o- like with Facebook right you can't I mean you can but not a lot of people just like type a one sentence thing like, it's usually like a, a bit more of a kind of paragraph uh, you know in depth kind yeah. of thing Whereas with Twitter, it's like, you know, this is bad or this is good. And then you've got all these different opinions. And then you've got the whole uh, mudslinging matches of people that disagree with each other and that. And, you know, news stories. And, and then that yeah. is like almost like the epicenter of information overload. Yeah, well, that, that's where social media shines, isn't it? Because yeah. Because it's all, all all cameras on them, all this all this attention for them. And, oh, I need to get on here and look at this. And, now oh, I want involved. I've got my piece to say. And you're just like, oh, God, here we go. Stone, we're, we're stoneballing you. <laughs> it's like everyone's yeah. a domino effect. Everyone's hopping on. I mean, uh, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I was, I was going to bring something up about a uh, bit. Of, uh, Never mind. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I think we've, I think we've, we've covered had, it. We've had we've a kind of good, we've had a good hour five minutes on this. Yeah, it's not bad, not bad it's for um, our social media talk. We were hoping for a little bit longer, but unfortunately, like I say, our third has been taken away from us again. Yeah, by the enemy. Yeah, the yeah <laughs> the, the, the firm. <laughs> the a, firm. A certain a certain caravan park. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> uh, uh, We'll have a little, like, we'll have a little general chat before we go. Ah, one, cool. one thing that we haven't brought up, I didn't actually get to bring this up in Musicians Fame Mary Part Two because you weren't here. I was going to bring it up to you when you did come here. We have a new setup. I know, I know, I like we've it. We've got more space. Yeah, I feel like I say I haven't seen the um the photos go up. I was sharing them as well. I was like, oh, nice. I like it. I like I the table. Like you know, the, the the table we maybe have to improve on in the future. But it's a start. It is. It's, it's a, a start. small victories, right? It's uh yeah. I don't feel so. Up on a pedestal. Yeah, well, yeah, mm. it's a bit more, bit more comfortable. Yeah, we've got the we've well. got the sturdier mic stands back, not the yes. ones that are gonna <laughs> fall, fall over, over with <laughs> the, the drop of a pin. <laughs> Randomly, just hit the floor, and we're like, "That's just some crazy bass for y'all." Well, I suppose we can talk about a couple things that are coming in the future, just to round off. Yeah, so, so obviously next week we're planning um, a guest. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to name, you're, gonna name drop them. You're taking the lead on the next yeah. episode, and I'm so going to be on recording. They grow up so fast around <laughs> these parts. <laughs> so this, uh, the next one's actually going to be my guest. That um, a topic I didn't fight to get on. It was already one in the works, wasn't it? We already planned I love to the get way it you in said there. Fight to get on. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like you're like kind of custody battling. I or like, hey, we'll I didn't, come I, on. I the didn't podcast. stop though. It was like every every week I was like, so when are we going to do this one? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and then so we've got we've got the date. So yeah, Monday I've got. A guest coming through to talk about like food in the northeast and the, um, uh, and the industry podcast poll yeah podcast um, poll he's also a chef to, so he will be he has, uh, he has a lot of previous experience and is currently a head chef yes um so yeah the, we wanted the, them to to battle we meant, out maybe we were meant to do the, the beach bar episode today but due to unforeseen circumstances that has been abandoned not permanently no just to we'll get it postponed to a later date as, <laughs> as with the whole isolation thing last week which i was meant this was actually meant to be the week that i was filming a no we were filming a podcast intro oh. as sean uh, the sean saw the filmmaker that we had on mm-hmm. um a couple of episodes ago is going to film us an, an intro and we're gonna i've got the musical set up for it and that so you'll be a bit more professionalized on the the intro nice. basis i'm looking forward to so that. i'm looking forward to, forward to I, I haven't got a date for it yet because it was meant to be so today. there's no there's not going to be any any c dot <laughs> well good <laughs> we've still got an outro to do as well we still have an outro don't rule it out but um it's coming moving in august musicians fame Murray parts three and four are yeah. set up we've also we we've have, got uh, another big thing in august as well my birthday ah <laughs> what are we going to do what, what? it's going to be the, the big three one oh we'll have to do some cel- celebratory 29 uh, for life though <laughs> you just stopped aging then that's it it's 29 for life but we've got uh, Chris Grant Chris Grant music coming on in August nice. that'll be our first interview hopefully that we conduct together mm-hmm. we've also got Scott Ramsey coming on these local aspiring musicians that have uh, I, I believe Chris Grant has an album that just dropped as well oh, really? so we'll have to talk to him about that and, and so on but anyway we're kind of we're, we're, we're dragging <laughs> Going this episode out so I guess we will see you because it's double figures the next episode. Who would have yeah. thought that we would have got to the good old Big 10? ten. Energize. I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I don't know what's the next milestone, like a hundred. Every time a new set of 
I like, think we should do it double should, figures, triple figures, and then maybe a thousand. Yeah, well, well a we thousand's have, a long way yeah, off yet. We might have to go like ten, a hundred, five hundred, and then yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a while. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> until episode ten. See you later from the NEC people. This podcast is also available on Google Podcasts, Breaker, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, and Spotify.